So three weeks in into this NFL season, and we already have one of those downer weeks. Why do I say downer week? Well, let's talk about it as I recap week three of this 2023 NFL season. So we kick things off on Thursday Night Football only on Amazon Prime Video for that Jeff Bezos money of $15.99 a month, pal, as my San Francisco 49ers took on the New York Giants in their home opener in a battle of the trenches, pretty much, that affected both quarterbacks. But hey, Brock Purdy and the Niners offense made a couple of big splash plays or two to run away with victory over the Giants, 30-12. to Going to the Sunday slate of games, starting with the early morning portion, uh, the Indianapolis Colts were without Anthony Richardson with, with a concussion, and Gardner Minshew had to step in, but he pulled a Dan Orlovsky slash Jimmy G that nearly cost the Colts the game. But their kicker, Matt Gay, came in clutch with four long field goals as the Colts kicked their way towards an upset over the Baltimore Ravens, 22-19 to in overtime. Meanwhile, in the land, Deshaun Watson had his best showing so far as a Cleveland Brown, going for two touchdowns and generally moving the offense pretty nicely uh, for the Cleveland Browns as they bounced back from a horrid Week 2 outing and shut down the Titans 27-3. to Meanwhile, for the Detroit Lions, their defensive front sack at Falcons quarterback Desmond Ritter six times in the Motor City and also generated a strip sack touchdown as a cherry on top as Detroit took care of Atlanta 27-6. to Meanwhile, in Green Bay, in their home opener, the Packers and Jordan Love struggled in the first half and a half, but they managed to come back from 17 down to beat the New Orleans Saints 18-17. to Meanwhile, for the Saints, uh, they got some bad news. Uh, Derek Carr left the third quarter with what ended up being a shoulder strain, but uh, the best case scenario for them, at least, is that it's not expected to keep him out for too long. It's going to be week to week rather than, oh, it's going to keep him out for much longer. So at least that's some news for them. Meanwhile, down the land of all elites, C.J. Stroud of the Houston Texans had his best showing yet three games into his rookie career. Um, as he and the Houston Texans dissected the Jaguars defense in the air with two touchdowns to his receivers, Tank Dell and Brevin Jordan, in a big upset win for the Texans, 37-17, to against the all-elite Jaguars. Meanwhile, down in Miami, and oh boy, are you ready for this one? Tua Tagovailoa and the Dolphins starting offense dropped a total can of whoop-ass on Denver for guess how many touchdowns, ladies and gentlemen? Seven combined touchdowns by them in three quarters. And then even the backups had some fun on Denver's starting team. The backups added onto the onslaught. Miami completely put the hammer on the Denver Broncos on 70. Yes, 7-0 to 20. Ouch. Ouch. That's massacre. In Miami. But anyway. Uh, Justin Herbert had another strong outing in Minnesota. Threw eight touchdowns to show for it. But the Chargers, man. They really love to clippers away games. They tried to do that again in Minnesota. But unlike the last two times this season. Their defense said enough is enough. They intercepted Kirk Cousins in the end zone. On the Vikings last chance drive. To seal the Chargers first win of the season. 28-24. So basically Minnesota season so far. Has basically been the reverse of last season. Oh, we're going to try to come back and win games, but except we're going to lose them all this time around. So, not good so far for Minnesota, huh? Meanwhile, in the Meadowlands, the Jets continued to melt down on offense with Zach Wilson. Um, but the Patriots, we're also not doing that hot either. Um, the Patriots barely escaped with their first win of the season after holding off a last second Hail Mary attempt from Zach Wilson, uh, 15 to 10. Meanwhile, in the nation's capital, the Bills commanded their will over there as their defense bullied Sam Howell all day long with a constant pressure, nine whopping sacks, and four interceptions, one of them being a pick six by their linebacker, AJ, or their defensive end, I'm sorry, AJ Epineza, as the Buffalo Bills put the hammer on the commanders 37 to 7. Going to the afternoon slate of games, uh, the rushing attack of Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet led the way uh, through the trenches of a tough Panthers defense 
as the Seahawks outlasted the Bryce Young list. Carolina Panthers 37 to 27. Meanwhile, in the desert, it was an efficient day all around for Arizona as the offense made some nice splash plays and the defense made some key stops on Dak Prescott in the offense in the red zone, including a game closing interception by linebacker Kaiser White and an upset over the Dallas Cowboys 28 to 16. Meanwhile, in Kansas City, in the kingdom, the Bears played extra generous Bears football because guess who was in the building, ladies and gentlemen? Taylor Swift. Yes, the 12 time Grammy Award winning Taylor Swift was in the kingdom and they were so nice. They were so nice uh, to Kansas City, especially towards Travis Kelsey. They were trying so hard. Uh, to help out their friend, Travis Kelsey, impress his new boo, Taylor Swift, as Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs easily dispose of the Bears 41-10. to Then the Sunday night football game of Week 3, uh, Jimmy G and the Raiders offense were pretty much stuck in neutral for much of this game, and their comeback uh, late in the game fell just short, not only because of time and a failure to get a stop on defense, but of course, a Jimmy Garbage fail, turnover, and interception to end the game 23-18. to Then we get to the Monday Night Football Mick doubleheader that was guaranteed to once again crush Monday Night Raw, Just despite how boring it was. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much the summary of Week 3. But anyway, uh, in the first Monday Night Mick doubleheader game, uh, the Eagles defense stymied Baker Mayfield and the Bucks offense all night long. As on the other end, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, despite their own struggles, their ground game held their bargain on the their end in an easy win, 25 to 11. But that Eagles offense gotta get something yet, gotta get something going. But nonetheless, they take care of business, 25 to 11 in Tampa Bay. Meanwhile, in the other Monday night doubleheader game. Between the Bengals and the Rams, both teams really struggled in the first half, but it was the Bengals that finally found their juice in the second half to get things going and get their first win of the season over LA 19 to 16. So yeah, that's pretty much your week three recap, your your game slate, and just looking at the whole thing, looking through uh, some of the games that I watched. Yeah, not exactly the most exciting week. Uh, in terms of what happened, not even the results saying, okay, yeah, <laughs> this is uh, uh, a good week. But hey, you always, you're, it's still very early in the season. Um, you, you might as well get these downers out of the way. Hey, you even you got a downer mid-season last week and two years ago. So might as well get out of the way now before we get to the more exciting action later on uh, deeper in the season. So you win some, you lose some as a fan. So speaking of winning and losing, let's talk about my two winners and losers of week three. Starting with my winners, uh, the Miami Dolphins. I mean, what is there really to say um, because <laughs> about the Dolphins in week three? Pretty much everyone had their way, um, especially head coach Mike McDaniel, um, like scheming up his offense, who were pretty much humming in many different ways. Um, second, And that was with, without their second top receiver, Jalen Waddell. Um, with, who was out with the concussion? But hey, they they didn't really need him and to drop a seventy burger. Hell, if he was out there, then how many more points were gonna they gonna drop? So that's just a testament of how like dangerous this Dolphins Dolphins office was, and kind of a testament of you know how they could have been you know had Tua stayed healthy. How pretty much everyone could have stayed how, had everyone stayed healthy. Hell, even the backups. Even the backups led by Mike White got in on the fun in the fourth quarter. Either that's a testament of how good this Dolphins team is or how very bad the Broncos were. And then speaking of the defense, you know, the Dolphins defense was flying everywhere, stopped the Denver offense from getting anything, anything remotely positive for most of this game. So, yeah, the key is to stay healthy, obviously, especially to a Tuck Viola. You got to continue to keep protecting him. Give them time to throw. And if they can do that, they're the team that we thought they would be last year. And then speaking of their their uh, AFC AFC chances, their AFC East uh AFC Eastness, let's talk about the Buffalo Bills. Because you know, looking at their own good performance, uh, because 
statisticians will probably say, oh, Josh Allen didn't have his cleanest game uh, of the of the of the week in Washington, but he didn't need to. Because looking at the way they played, it seemed like they finally figured it out um, on how to properly support Josh Allen. Like I've been telling them, like I've been preaching that you have to find a way to make Josh Allen run the ball a lot less. Stop putting so much pressure in making Josh Allen do every, any everything, like running, especially running the ball. Like get get that mentality out of his head so much. Against Washington on Sunday, Josh Allen, I mean, sure, he ran the ball, but only when necessary, when the pressure was crumbling around him. It wasn't like, oh, let's call up a play where Josh Allen purposely runs the ball. No, he only ran the ball on instinct. So you saw a lot of run, running plays with James Cook, mostly handling the rushing duties, and he was pretty effective with it. I mean, sure, Washington's run defense is not that great, but it's a start. Is definitely a start. So if the Bills can keep that going, then they won't have to put all so much pressure on Josh Allen as they've done in the last year or two. And speaking of which, these two are on a collision course to next week when they face off. Why isn't this the Sunday night game for next week? Really? Chiefs and Jets? Why do we have to see a, 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 another blowout in prime time? Anyway. Uh, the losers. My losers for this week. The Denver Broncos, yeah, the team that got mollywopped by Miami, 50 points. Three weeks in, and this is already straight up embarrassing uh, to see what's unfolding, what's like melting in the mile high. I mean, I don't know if it's entirely to blame on Russell Wilson, but I, I don't even know if he's like the quarterback he once was anymore. I mean, sure, there's some flashes there, but... I don't. I can't even tell if Sean Payne can fix him, but I don't know. Something, something's just not right. Something not right with the offensive line. Something's not clicking with the with him with Wilson in the receiving core. I don't know what's going on on the offense, and but the defense though, that was just embarrassing. That was awful. <laughs> that was again two on the offense are 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 really good, but. Not finding ways to generate any pressure on, on Tua. Not finding ways to try and shut down Tyreek or or Raheem. And even the backups. When you still had the starters out there during the four, you just let them swing by. It's like you gave up. Like, wow. That was really bad. It, that, was, that was really horrible. And, you know, now that I think about it, Sean Payne still had his starters out in the fourth quarter. Maybe to try and generate some. I don't know if he was trying to generate anything positive, but I thought it was more something like punishment. Punishment for that embarrassment that was dropped on them. Like, wow. Wow. So, I, I don't know. This this ship is sinking really fast in Denver. And, I mean, this is just my opinion. I don't know if there's any real fix for them in sight. Speaking of uh, fix... The Jaguars, like this all elite Jaguars were supposed to be dismantling this rebuilding Texans team. But now instead they were on the receiving end of it. The offensive line problems that I've talked about, including, uh, you know, the, the four game suspension of Cam Robinson were on full display. Trevor Lawrence was under duress because of it. He was trying, he had to get rid of the ball like very quickly with that Texans pass rush. That's, that seems like it's coming a little bit together. It's still not there, but it is taking full advantage of the incomplete Jaguars offensive line. Um, and speaking of that Jaguars offensive line, it really cratered and it really played potential scoring drives, uh, especially once they got to that red zone again. The defensive front failed to generate any pressure onto CJ Stroud, no sacks on him, despite the Texans offensive line missing starters of their own to injury, and now you look at Jacksonville, they're one and two, they're going to London to face the Falcons and the Bills, both in London, and sure, there's still time to fix some things, it's still early in the season, but they got to resolve their own issues, if they want to hope a team like the Colts, or eat, oh, sure, the Texans are still rebuilding, 
But you better hope that none of those teams catch fire in this very weak division. So you got to be careful here if you're the Jaguars. So let's talk about my one big takeaway from week three um, before we get out of here. And that is my value of the quote any given week, any given week, uh, <laughs> very early in the season. So, well, many of us, you know, that talk about uh, sports, uh, whether it's here on YouTube or at sports media, make all these picks uh, with whether it's the NFL, the NBA, baseball, hell, even wrestling. I think it's safe to say sometimes we can be very predictable with our picks. Sometimes it's justifiable, but then other times when we looked at this past Sunday, a swerve can come in your way. Just like in pro wrestling, there's always sometimes a swerve. So at the end of the day, nothing is guaranteed in the world of sports. Just ask the Dallas Cowboys. Just ask the Baltimore Ravens. Just ask the all elite Jacksonville Jaguars. Just ask them if they learned anything on Sunday is that you better come ready to play. Otherwise, if you don't, then you're going to get fucked in the ass and go on the upset train and fall victim to the likes of the Cardinals, fall victim to the Colts, and fall victim to the Texans. All who look like rebuilding teams, but nope. At least for one week, they get to fly to W. So, any given week, any given Sunday, it should definitely always be valued. So that is your recap for week three of the 2023 NFL season. Yeah, pretty middling week, pretty downer of a week, um, considering like the quality of play, um, the pretty boring for the most part. But I mean, hey, might as well get it over with now um, and move on to next week. So hopefully week four will be a much better week. But anyway, what did you guys think about week three of this season? Uh, did your team win? Did your team lose? If your team lost, go ahead and vent about it in the comments. Um, what about the other teams that that you guys thought were kind of interesting through in week three? I'd like to also know about that in the comments below, and we could start a discussion about it. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. This is Dylan Lasagna of Very Cold Lasagna, and keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And until next time, peace out.